Get this on the Triple M Network. Foo Fighters, the pretender from the new album here. Get this on Triple M. What were you singing along to that during the song, Richard? Isn't there a bit of the lyric in that song, one of these things is not like the other? From oh, yeah. Sesame Street. Sesame Street. Uh, they haven't actually taken the melody, but certainly the lyric sounds similar. So Dave Grohl's been hanging around. Sesame Street. On the street, pinching ideas. Brought to you by the letter F. Yeah. The new Foo Fighters album. You'll, you'll see him dressed as a chef falling down some stairs with some pastries next. <laughs> I used to love that bloke. Who was that? This guy was a 10 strawberry shortcakes oh, yeah, yeah. and fell down some stairs. <laughs> I heard he had a stunt double for some of the prime numbers. Is that right? right. Sorry. Mm. What are we talking about? Richard Marslin. That's... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Remember yesterday's show tone yeah. when he sexually harassed me? Yeah, I do remember that. He said something about me having a beautiful body. Well, he was, I didn't say beautiful. He was comparing you to Britney Spears with the sprayed on abs. Some scented oils he was throwing my direction. Sure. And I, I so, said, it was complimentary, I said that you didn't need to spray on abs. Yes. Yeah, You've see, got your own. That's a come on, where I come from. <laughs> I'll keep it He's wearing a crop top. <laughs> yeah. You know, but anyway, so I, was, I thought I'd leave it be. I'll leave it be. This morning, I was sitting in the office, and I'm trying to watch some YouTube. Uh, and Rich taps me on the shoulder and goes, there you go, mate. There you go. No, no, there you go. And I said, oh, thanks, Rich. Hands me two bits of paper. One that says, uh, burglar used vacuum toilet duck as sexual aid. Yeah. And then the other one says, staff at a German butcher shop was shocked to discover a customer had hidden two sex toys in a sausage. <laughs> then he wandered off. Okay, so what is that? Is that a guy giving you his two best stories? Well, I don't know. For the day, for the show, going... I thought so, but then he sent me an email later on asking if I wanted to go around to his place for some German sausage and a spot of light cleaning. <laughs> That's a bit gay. <laughs> All right, thank Come you. on. Richard, I am not a piece of meat. Yeah. I have feelings. All right? What was that first story? What was the top okay. one that right. he gave you? Burglar used vacuum, comma, toilet duck, bottle as sexual aid. See, what we've learned over the course of get this is where burglars go wrong is they break into your house mm. and then they stick around to use the facility. <laughs> so steal any, and the other, thing that, yeah. the other thing that burglars have lost is the stealing things bit. <laughs> I know. They get in and they go, geez, I'd love a telly. But that toilet duck is giving me the eye. <laughs> it's giving me the eye. Have some pizza. I'll have some something out of the fridge. Yeah, yeah. Jeez, what is that on the stove? Dinner and show. <laughs> it's going to be a great show today. Sure, but uh, uh, not to put too fine a point on it. Shit happens, Tony. Oh, oh come on. Dear, oh dear. Kids in the car. No need for that sort of language, <laughs> Mr. Abbott. Please. Hey, that's a good link to play that uh, clip we've got of John Howard doing karaoke. Except that it's not John Howard doing karaoke. I just had to label it that when I put it in the computer so that Ed wouldn't know what it was. This has been slipped to us by someone from the sales department. Do I have powers to sack people at the station at all time? Do I have that? Oh, this is good news, isn't it? Yeah. This is great news. Ed karaoke is what it is. <laughs> Cavaloki. We've, 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 we've done it before. Cavaloki. Yeah. Just play it. Here's the gym. You both take off your shoes. This is your bit. Listening to Triple M. Everybody, <laughs> come on! Oh, that's, the tape suddenly just cuts out in the middle of the chorus. What happened there? This will be the day that I die. <laughs> you chose that, the longest song ever. No, no, that subject. was the Madonna version. Uh, what do you mean subject? <laughs> what do you mean subject? Does other people? What function was that? That was at the ski trip. At the ski trip, I went on the work function. Yeah. How did they record that? Who recorded that? <laughs> I don't know. We have spies everywhere. We certainly do. Does that count as a song, Nikki? Definitely. Yes. <laughs> Nikki says yes, and. <laughs> Music department says no. Oh, all right. <laughs> what a real shame. Richard was so looking forward to playing that. Yeah, I'm really not happy with that. They even picked the best one that I did. <laughs> oh, hang on. Was there a whole bunch oh, of songs? Oh, I did, I did an amazing rendition of You're the Voice. Mm. Uh, Why all these long songs? <laughs> Hotel California. Was that in the Sister Ray by Velvet Underground? Because there's more FaceTime on stage with the longest <laughs> songs. How dare you, Richard? And there's a certain phrase I know that you like to crowbar into your karaoke performances. Which is? Mm -hmm. Of an evening. I'm not sure, but I know that you've... Go on, say it. You've told me, oh, it's something to do with a dog. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, short bus style. Okay. Dog. That's things. enough. Are the kids out of school yet? We don't want any trouble. Yeah, uh, yeah. In the meantime, let's have some more music here at Triple M. I was It's 
certainly did die. <laughs> I'm gonna, it was I'm like gonna... the music had been on a date with Phil Spector. <laughs> Lee Winnell. Hello, sir. Uh, Lee, we were talking about the Saw movies. Yes. Um, now, okay, the first one. You were in that. You yes. wrote that. Everyone knows that. Now, as we progress down the series, how involved are you? Um, the the second two I wrote, but wasn't I? I was stupid in that uh, I didn't know the films obviously were going to progress to sequels. Otherwise, I wouldn't have killed off my character. <laughs> <laughs> and believe me, I fought at production meetings. I was like, "What if he was cloned?" <laughs> they go into the room, DNA. <laughs> now, they did it with uh, with Ripley in Alien, right? Remember they they killed her at the end of yes. Alien yeah. Three and then brought her back through cloning. That's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But okay, how does that? Does it matter, though, anymore? I mean, like, what happened with Jeffrey Rush in Pirates of the Caribbean? I'm pretty sure he died in the first one. He was one. really dead in that first one. and in this, But apparently when you die, you just end up in a brothel. Right, yeah, yeah, exactly. For someone to come and find you. <laughs> well, it's never stopped. Yeah, Freddie and Jason just keep going and going. But with this one, I, I uh, yeah, I, I wrote the film and ended up killing off my character at the end of the yeah. first one. So with the second two, I just wrote them and was... I'd sort of be there on set in a kind of, I guess, a weird kind of executive producery typey they they would come to me and say oh you know what do you think we should do here or something so we were definitely involved and James as well right. James who directed the first film he didn't direct the second two but he was still sort of involved it's been good because the producers actually credit it like you know we have the knowledge of it of yes. this universe yes, so if yes. they have a question they'll come to us yes well see now it seems to me that if you didn't do them someone else would just absolutely take over and it would be Jigsaw versus Predator. <laughs> yeah. There's gonna, they're going to well, go down that path. Have though, they but... asked you? Have they asked Jigsaw to take anyone on? <laughs> Not yet, but uh, I actually think that would be kind of cool. At the moment, I'm waiting for like you know Jigsaw Six Mission to Moscow or whatever. <laughs> when, once it gets into official police academy territory, is when I I want to start thinking of zany location changes. Like this time he's in Russia or whatever. <laughs> well, what about uh, Jigsaw versus Andy McDowell? I'd love to see him have a crack at her. She's been getting away with it for ages. Jigsaw down under. <laughs> Jigsaw down under. Yes. Not Nice. Versus Kangaroo Jack. There's a great history of uh, American sort of uh, film franchises and TV shows visiting Down Under. Oh, we don't, love don't worry about I, that. I particularly remember, do you guys love uh, The Facts of Life Down Under was oh, a highlight yeah. for me. What happened there? Right. had a Crocodile Dundee sort of character. I can't remember the character's name. God, see, Angus would be good for this, but she killed the bad guys by throwing a boomerang at them yeah, across yeah, Sydney Harbour. They, they always found a way to incorporate <laughs> the boomerang. And it was always those travel shows were always about someone losing their luggage and a microfilm ending yes. up in the luggage, like when Family Ties... <laughs> Visited yeah. London. That's yeah. right. <laughs> There's a lot of microfilm work. <laughs> well, I, well, I got the DVD, Lee, of Love Thy Neighbour Down Under. Yes. Uh, nice. And nice. he moves to Blacktown uh, in <laughs> Sydney. Right. And there's not one second I can play on the show. <laughs> I got it. And I was like, here we go. Here come the cliffs. He arrives at the airport, meets an Asian man. There's nothing we can play <laughs> right. that. Gotcha. There's nothing. Six episodes, not a word. <laughs> That's right, because um, we were going, well, surely the plot can only be that the two blokes move by coincidence coincidence to Australia and end up living next to each <laughs> right. other. Or he's next door to an Aboriginal family. Yeah, no. Surely it has to be one of those two. And what was the answer? The answer is that he hates Australians, all of them, any Everyone. of them. He doesn't oh. care which one. Gotcha. And then he meets an Italian. He can't believe his eyes <laughs> or his ears. Uh, it's your chance, Lee, to drop a few names because when Angus Sampson comes on, they just tumble from oh, yeah. him. It's amazing. Yeah, it Lou happens. Ferrigno. <laughs> I've met Lou. Lou Ferrigno, the I have original met Lou. Hulk. I actually met Lou at this amazing thing. Um, they have these huge um, uh, fan conventions over in, yes. in the States where yes. it's like basically, you know, they can get 100,000 of these people, sort of 40-year-old virgins, who are all real-life versions of the comic book guy from The Simpsons. Oh, that's, that's right, that's right. I now return to my comic book store <laughs> where dispense with the insults. <laughs> and do they uh, have a lot to say to you, Lee? Yeah, they do. It's amazing. Um, James and I have been to, we've racked up a fair few of them. They kind of set you up on a table and you have a few sort of photos of yourself and these kids <laughs> queue up. And it's really humbling, actually, because they come along dressed as the characters. Right. I mean, you think it's really special until you look over and it's like an extra from Deep Space Nine has a queue longer <laughs> than yours. And you're like, okay, obviously uh, we're not that special. But I remember sitting there and... Uh, I heard that the bad guy from Mad Max 2, played by Vernon Wells, oh, Wes. Oh, yes. I had heard that he was at this convention we were at. Jeez. And I was like, oh, I'd love to meet him. And I kept signing away. And uh, and then I hear this voice say, I'll have one. And I, at that stage, I was so tired. I was like, who do I make it out to? <laughs> no, no, I don't really want one. I look up and it's Vernon. Wow. And I, I was so amazed to meet, because I'm such a huge Mad Max fan, especially Mad Max 2. Yes. He took me over to what I can only call celebrity death row. <laughs> it's a bunch of guys lined up with tables and he's like, uh, Lee, I'd like you to meet a friend of mine. This is Chris. And I'm looking at him and I, I vaguely recognize him. 
it was uh, the guy from the Blue Lagoon. Christopher oh, Atkins, oh, was it? Christopher Atkins. Yeah. And, and I move along. He, he moves me along to the next table. He's like, uh, Lee, another good friend of mine, David. This guy, I had no idea. I was looking at him. I was like, okay, he kind of looks like a real estate agent. I looked down at his photos. It was David McNaughton from American Werewolf in London. Oh, right. Who now makes a living. Uh, just he, David Norton. David think, Norton. Yes. Sorry, not McNaughton. I apologize. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, got to get the details. And, <laughs> and, and so this is where these guys kind of go to live out their careers. They've done one thing and then they can go to these conventions and make thousands of dollars signing but, but are there a lot of blue lagoon enthusiasts still out there <laughs> lee pirate movie absolutely i mean these these guys will will pay and it, it becomes a thing not even of i'm a fan of that show it's just oh my god that's that guy from the blue lagoon won't that be funny if i get his autograph oh, and yeah. uh, the last guy was lou and i kind of i introduced myself to him and he i said oh can i grab a photo lou and he's like it's 20 dollars or whatever so I give him I give him the money and then when Vernon said, Oh, this is the guy who made Saw, he leapt over the table and grabbed my money. He's like, Oh no, no, I'm sorry, I thought you were one of them. <laughs> oh, and then he hands me a DVD and he's like, You know, I still do movies. I still do movies. Oh, and what was so, the uh, DVD of? It was uh, it's a little highlight reel, lose highlight reel. Amazing stuff. <laughs> really? For yeah, Rignomania <laughs> is coming back. You what know, a Hulk as you, can, as you someone was coming out here for a convict. We got terrible news oh, yesterday, yes. Lee. One of our heroes on this show, one of my all-time heroes, Adam West, oh, who played Adam, Batman. Of course. West. A much funnier actor than people realised yeah. at the Genius. time. He was coming out here. And a better Batman than Val Kilmer. Sure. I'll say. <laughs> than <Batman>. any of them. <laughs> he was going to come on this show, sit in that chair, and co-host an hour and get this. I had so many questions oh, about no. the Penguin's gold tank, it was going to take hours. <laughs> and we found out yesterday he's not coming to Australia anymore because his house has burnt down. Yeah. Uh, Stately snubbed. Wayne Manor. Yeah. Riddler. Unbelievable. The Riddler. It's got to be the Riddler. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I'd take that as an excuse, but I think that that is heartbreaking because, I mean, he's one of those guys that you could really keep it. I'd say the full two hours you could oh, keep Adam no, West no, here no, for. Just yeah. 24 hours all West. <laughs> and who are we we're getting someone else instead, though? Uh, Billy West from Billy, Futurama. Oh, Billy West, yeah, Ren and Stimpy, and mm. yeah, the voiceover artist. Yes. Great. Excellent. Mm. Another West. Not quite. <laughs> I mean, he's great, <laughs> yes. but he's not Adam West. Yeah. He's the West that Adam West rejects. We're what? getting the Billy West. Okay. That's All right. right. I can feel puns. I can feel puns arriving quickly. Go to a song. Now, we've got Lee Winnell with us. He's got a million stories, yeah, but we've got a limited ones. amount of time. How much time do we have, Mr. Marslin? Uh, we've got about uh, about 45 seconds. Uh, that's not enough time. Possibly to a minute. A oh, wow. Stephen Seagal story. Have you been wow. working with Stephen Seagal? I haven't been working with him, unfortunately, but I did attempt to contact him. I met somebody who was um, a manager for these people who make personal appearances. Those guys I was talking about yeah, before, yeah. they have managers who book them in. This guy had a mobile phone full of, he had all these numbers, Gary Busey. Ooh, wow. <laughs> One of them was Stephen. I said, give me that phone. It was 2 a.m. I'd had a few. I said, give me that phone. I want to call Stephen. So I called him. <laughs> Now, I spoke to his personal assistant, hey. and I pitched to him, but I believe he was right next to her, and I said, I want to pitch Stephen a movie. And on the, off the top of my head, I said, it's called Deadly Violence. <laughs> it's, and, and she's like, what? What's it about? And I said, it's a martial arts action comedy about personal trainers. And uh, there's a marvellous fight scene involving free weights. I've secured Margot Kidder for the female lead. Ooh. Is Stephen in or is he out? And she, uh, I believe that a deal nearly happened on the phone at 2 a.m. <laughs> I'm sure <laughs> I'm sure he would have been sitting there going, Deadly Violence, I think I've done that one. Yeah. I'm sure a couple of times I've done that one. Do you know what they say though, Tone? Yeah. About our show, mm. there's not enough product placement. There's not enough, uh, you know, selling of things. There's not enough ad advertorials. Do they say that? Really? They say that all the time. But we often mention our sponsors, our fine sponsors, the Nissan Navara yeah. with their huge pulling power and rugged good looks. Yeah, but then maybe that's not uh, what everyone's after. Okay. Thankfully, uh, really? now here's Richard. Thanks, Ed. Well, today's busy singles all tell me the same thing. I don't have time to cook dinner, which is why the team at Chateau Marsland have come up with three delicious Marsland recipes. You can choose from the Moroccan flag waver, three farmers' union iced coffees and a packet of Winnie Blues with the filter cut out. Why not try Hit the Beats, a delicious pavement t-shirt casserole, or my personal favourite, I'm After Rove's Job, a service station hot dog uh, wrapped in a pair of Explorer socks. They're all nutritious and Marsland dishes. Back to you, Tony. That is very impressive. What the listeners didn't know is Richard had not read a word of that before he spoke it on air, and not one stumble. Not one, Rich. You thought you had him, man. I thought I had him. This will get him back for that karaoke business. Oh, yeah. I never thought he'd get through casserole. <laughs> that is fantastic. <laughs> well done. It was very professional. Such okay. a trooper, you'd never know. Hey, here's a treat. In the next hour of the show, 
Andrew Mercado is going to be sitting in TV here. expert. Oh, he knows everything about old TV shows. Mm. And you might remember recently, uh, I got out my old VHSs of It's Gary Shandling's show. Now, who's Gary Shandling? For he's, well, he was later Larry Sanders. Okay. But he's not that well known. He's not a household name. No, he was the voice of one of the uh, animated creatures in Over the Fence, I yeah, think, recently right. as well. He's hosted the Grammys a few times. You'd know his face. Big teeth. You... Yes, that's right. Big hair, big teeth. Mm. Had a great sitcom in the 80s that you had to stay up. Up till four in the morning to tape. And did you do that, Tone? I did every night. <laughs> <laughs> I could have said the thing, but I didn't want like five minutes of exactly. Spencer for hire at the beginning no, of exactly each episode. Exactly right, Tone. And that's paid off, hasn't it? <laughs> it certainly has. <laughs> but I was watching them back and they've still got, these are from 20 years ago, they've still got the old uh, Pete Smith coming up next announcements under the oh, end for credits. Channel 9. Fantastic. And I thought, since we're doing TV nostalgia today, let's yeah. do it. Let's have a listen to a few of them and remind ourselves what life was like 20 years ago. Stay with Channel 9 now for Robert Hurick, starring as Spencer for Hire. There's a whole show full of Easter goodies on Hey Hey It's Saturday this weekend with Gold Logie winner Daryl Summers introducing Noiseworks, Stephen Cummings and Irish songstress Enya. <laughs> <laughs> Those were the days. <laughs> Irish songstress. <laughs> oh, I love it, in you. Oh, an OK flow. <laughs> Give wow. us another one, Rich, please. <laughs> we late night action next on Nine. Stay tuned for Robert Urich starring as Spencer for Hire. <laughs> then see Larry Hackman in our late movie, Deadly Encounter. <laughs> There's dirty tricks at a summer camp when Ghostbusters' Bill Murray is let loose in Meatballs. meatballs. Channel 9's Friday movie comedy at 8.30. Oh, Meatballs. Meatballs went out at 8.30. On a Friday. <laughs> Must have been about oh. six minutes long. That was great. That was as good as when I saw uh, Bill Collins. Remember Bill Collins? Oh, yes. On the Channel 10. He used to do the movie classic on yeah, Saturday night. Introduced and then occasionally there'd be footy on Saturday night, so he'd have to do it on Friday. But movie classics weren't the Friday format, so he'd have to present, like, you know, meatball. <laughs> and one time they gave him Caddyshack and he had the poster behind him. He just got up and walked off. Really? Oh. Wouldn't say a word about Caddyshack. <laughs> what a snob. Check this one out. It's hip, it's hot, it's cool, it's action plus. Get down with the undercover crowd of 21 Jump Street, 830 <laughs> tonight on 9. This week, Penn Hall and Hanson experience the horrors of war-torn El Salvador as they join gorillas on a desperate search for Penhall's wife. <laughs> Johnny Depp and Holly Robinson star in 21 Jump Street, tonight, 8.30 on 9. Hang on. What are they doing in El Salvador? I can't remember that. <laughs> oh, they were trying to retrieve some bandanas. That's all they did in that show, jump fences and wear bandanas. Is that like when Are You Being Served went to Spain? <laughs> Maybe. Okay, have we got another one of those? Beginning at 7.30 tonight, a fun-filled hour of laughs when Tony Danza stars in Who's the Boss? <laughs> then more fun with Kirk Cameron in Growing Pains. Oh. What a great hour. Tonight, 7.30 on 9. Oh, well, he didn't days. even sound convinced about <laughs> no. what a great hour. <laughs> he had to crank up that what a great hour. <laughs> so Gary Shandling's show, 4 o'clock in the morning. <laughs> yes. Growing Pains, prime time. Bang. That's right. Who's the boss? Welcome to Australia. <laughs> mm. This is, get this. I've used the analogy. Oh. It, it's like a... Yes, we know. Highly um, yes, designed no, Formula no, One no, racing, racing car. car. We know, just... Um, yep. It's uh, driving at a fast pace. pace. Just drop a sandbag, but please. It's a driver in a highly... Oh, the treasure is enormous, swollen plums! <laughs> <laughs> yes, Andrew McCarter was back. Laden down with DVDs. I'm distracted by your book. I know you're not here to talk about it. Uh, Super Soaps. When did that come out? Look, that came out about three years ago. But, I mean, I did talk about Prisoner within that book. Yeah, yeah, And yeah. And, of course, that, that's what sort of led to all these DVDs. That's mm. why I'm doing the DVDs now, because they consider me a self-proclaimed expert. This is brilliant, Andrew. Thank you very Thank much. Thank you. Because I was raised by the television and TV shows <laughs> that I vaguely remember late at night when I was meant to be in bed. And I was looking up here, and when I was a kid, you know, uh, at the tail end of number 96, perhaps, perhaps it was repeats, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And there's one here that you were talking about called the unisexes. Oh, yeah. Now, I don't remember that bad boy. Well, this was hippies that lived in a commune <laughs> and made jeans. And the, the title of the show was The Unisexes because they were unisex jeans. Get oh, it? Okay. I get but it. There was, there was only one slight problem with it. The show was being made for a family audience. Oh, okay. So what could hippies actually do in a family show? Not very much, you see. <laughs> But then there's another one here that you go on to say that the network perhaps was worried about sort of too many Brady Bunch style programs. So they commissioned a pilot called The Two Way Mirror. Oh, yeah. You I've seen The Two Way Mirror. Now, what is how it? would you describe The Two Way Mirror? Uh -huh. The Two Way Mirror is probably the 
stupidest concept for a TV show either. It makes a great first five-minute opening scene, but what happens <laughs> next, I'm buggered if I know. The two-way mirror was a photographic studio, mm. and the mirror where the models would get changed into was two-way. So oh, like the yeah. model would be taking her top off, yes, and everyone be watching on the other side. Mm. And it's like, okay, then, then what happens? <laughs> I think that's a whole channel on Foxtel now, <laughs> just that. So they made a pilot. Yes. And so what, what were they going to do? So in the pilot itself, the, the, the what, pi- what happens? After that first, yeah. uh, <laughs> admittedly amazing opening scene, Great like moment. Logie material. I replay. do also remember Cornelia Francis is in it. And there's a moment where she walks past the, the two-way mirror and suddenly realises she's looking into a room where two people are making love and she does that great double take like, oh, oh, am I seeing this? Now, wasn't Madge from Neighbours? She was in there, yes. Okay. But how old was she when she was getting it at? Getting well, this is back in the 70s, mid-70s. Okay. And the idea was that two-way mirror was going to be the raunchiest Ooh. soap of all time. So that through this two-way mirror, the nudity would just be going off the Richter scale. Okay. <laughs> That was the plan. That's the, See, the thing is, 70s style nudity is, uh, it's a nudity of its own, really, isn't it? Yeah. It's not the buffed, sort of shiny oh, nudity no, no, of no, today. No, it's no, the no. adventures of a plumber's mate yeah. style, <laughs> Alvin Purple, carry on, flabby kind of 70s yeah. nudity. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And rec- no, not recently, I reckon five years ago, the Comedy Channel re-ran the TV series of Alvin Purple. Mm-hmm. Now, as I remember it... After the movie? Yeah, after the movie, yeah. but the same cast. First episode is Graham Blundell, tackle out, completely nude, <laughs> yeah. running around in the lounge room with nude women. Yeah. Now, this is in a normal three-walled video and lit. that was the ABC. That was, that the, was ABC. the ABC's contribution to 70s nudity. Now, imagine... If- <laughs> <laughs> they had a quota to fill. Yes. But imagine if that went out today. Like, if you had a sitcom on commercial TV in America, say, mm. which just had nude women and men running about, no carefully positioned lamps or nothing. <laughs> oh, no, no, no. It's all there. Candlelight vigil, that's what it'd lead to. <laughs> That'd be on the front of the New York Times. Yeah. I mean, it was extraordinary era. But it certainly was, was. What was the premise of the Alvin Purple running around the lounge room with I the gear off? Irresistible to women. Ah. Women just threw their clothes off when they saw our Alvin Purple, you <laughs> see. They just, they all... Wasn't he, never, he didn't ask them to. They just took their clothes off. <laughs> It was the 70s. Because yeah. that's how I picture the 70s. Yeah. I wasn't born then. And I, the way I picture it is you'd walk up, you wouldn't even get hello out, and someone's nah. clothes would be off. Yeah. And you're in a field daisy chaining, you know? <laughs> you know well, sure. <laughs> that's how it worked on the national broadcaster. Mm. What would you like to see? Uh, let's not just go Australian, international, Andrew. What isn't on DVD that should be? That I want to see? Yeah. Well, I want to see the dramatic version of The Brady Bunch that's never been shown in Australia. Oh, right. Well, I actually lived in America. I saw it go to air, so I know it exists. It's now, called The Brady's. Wow. And it's dramatic. So Marsha's an alcoholic. <laughs> Jan's infertile. She can't have children. She adopts a Korean baby. This oh. is the same actors. Yeah, same actors. Well, not Marsha, sorry. Marsha's the one person that goes... I'm not doing this. Sorry. <laughs> this is ridiculous. Bobby's in a wheelchair. He's paralysed. He's a racing car driver. He smashes his car. He ends up in a wheelchair. Oh, fantastic. And Peter is a playboy in the age of AIDS. No way. Yeah, 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 yeah. This is Having cool. a lot of sex, Peter. Is. The Brady's. The Brady's. Why didn't they do that with all of them? Why was there never the Munsters, you know, a dramatic oh, <laughs> someone in rehab? Yeah, yeah. Eddie would have been in rehab, <laughs> wouldn't he? <laughs> right. Okay, that's a pretty good one. Um, what would you like to see is there? Is Potluck out on DVD? We've talked about this. Yeah. Uh, and next week I'll be reading out a very moving email from someone who was <laughs> a contestant on Potluck okay. and has the inside dirt. Now, the other one, is which I think has just been released, was a show called Press Gang, which is something I was oh, yeah, glued Press out. to. Yeah. Uh, is it out now? It's out, yeah. With Dexter Fletcher and Julia Swahara. Really? Complete series, yeah. Okay. Cool, blimey. Thanks, Rich. Uh, right. I was talking earlier about It's Gary Shandling's yeah, show. Good, Not good. the Larry Sanders show, the precursor to it from mm. the 1980s. A great series, very innovative series. There was one episode I was watching where the show begins, the audience applauds, it's a shot of the set, nothing happens for two minutes. <laughs> Nothing. Complete silence. Locked off shot. The audience sort of shifting uneasily in their chairs. Then the theme tune runs in its entirety. Still nothing happens for another two minutes. The theme tune runs again. Nothing happens for another minute. We're like six and a half minutes into a show. Literally nothing has happened. And then the cast wander on looking for Gary. They can't find him. They go out the back. He's fallen down a well like baby Jessica. (laughs) They lower a camera down, and he does 10 minutes of the show on a single camera from the bottom of a well. 
4.30 in the morning yeah. <laughs> while in prime time growing pain. Yeah. <laughs> Mr. Mars and what's not on DVD that certainly should be. Remember those little plasticine things? They went for about five or six minutes on the yes, ABC, yes, the red yes, and the blue. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> just speaking yeah. in a sort of generic uh, European language. I'd love to see some of them. I think oh. it was a Dutch uh, production. It was a Dutch, yeah. yeah. A Dutch, Dutch or Danish. Just stop motion animation. Wow. It was great yeah, stuff. It was hilarious. Yes. Um, also, on an Australian front, Richmond Hill. Is there any oh. news... <laughs> Um, that was sort of before East Street. <laughs> Not yeah. enough blank discs for that one. <laughs> I'm a bit of an Amanda Muggleton fan. Okay. You know, I'd like to get I thought you were a Punch McGregor man. Look, I can do them all. <laughs> <laughs> Punch McGregor's coming in Class of 75. Is that right? That's a done deal. Oh, class of 75 is locked yeah. down. The paperwork's right, done. Thank fantastic. you very much. Last time you were here, you were talking about arcade. How's that uh, going? Well, look, we're getting there. <laughs> There's a few music issues with it. Got to make Doug Parkinson agree to us replaying his theme song. Come on, Dougie. Get on board. <laughs> Did he do the theme to Arcade? Yeah. What was it like? Maybe you and I were all walking through an arcade. <laughs> Doug Parkinson. Gee. He, of course, gave a lot more power than I did. No, no. <laughs> well, obviously, beautiful. if he doesn't give permission, you could just get in a booth <laughs> and dub it over every episode. I could never do, Doug. Let's just mention what happened over the weekend briefly. Did I see you in the social pages, Ed Cameron? Oh, yeah, did I did too, page? yeah. Now, who, uh, what, uh, that was... Oh, uh, yes, who are, uh, what uh, is a very good question <laughs> indeed. Yeah, that, that made me look a bit dodgy because... Uh, <laughs> did it just? It was at the premiere of Superbad, yeah. which I went to with my flatmate Vero, who's not a photogenic man. Uh, <laughs> so when they when I wandered past, I was trying to get it past, they were talking to Ryan Shelton, he's big these days. Sure. Uh, and they grabbed me and they said, Ed, Ed, can you have a photo? I said, sure. And then they brought over like a model in a police outfit. Oh, is that how it happened? Oh, right. Yes, yeah, this is the reaction I was waiting for. And then I wandered off. But in the paper, it looks like everyone brought a friend. Sure does. Ed brought a stripper in a cop's <laughs> outfit. <laughs> That the woman concerned is a stripper. You're not no, suggesting that. No, but that's that was the implication of the of me grinning mm. like a Cheshire that's, cat as usual. Well, that's what I inferred from it, and that's what everyone on the internet, MySpace, and Facebook seems to have inferred from it. So very, very nice. I like how you two don't think it's believable that a woman that attractive might just be hanging out with me. <laughs> no, I just thought good night. Wow, excellent. Things are going well. Yeah, in fact, I don't think anyone suggested that at all. Yeah, maybe. Yeah, right. Yeah, why? <laughs> but hey, let's get straight to the real action over the weekend. What did you see at a takeaway shop? Oh, right. Here we go. We're, <laughs> yeah. Thanks. Thanks, Tone. Great link. Uh, what we're doing is we're playing parental threats, mm, i.e. Yeah, what yeah. did you used to get threatened with when you were a kid? What threats did your parents make to yeah. you to try and get you to behave? We'll bleed that into bizarre punishments that you used to get dished out to you as <laughs> sure. a child. Uh, anyways, because I was in a, a chicken shop mm, mm, over the weekend, and there was a kid who was just mucking around and being loud and throwing crayons, right. and his mum said, right, you're uh, you're going to have to go to bed early. Couldn't care less. That wasn't... Uh, it's not, not going to happen. Okay. He kept going. I'll take your bike away. I'll take your bike Couldn't away. care less. Wow. Kept going, kept going. It got worse, got worse, got worse. You're not allowed to watch television. Ha! Well, laughable. Even that? Laughable. Jeez. Kept going, kept going, and she went, right... That's it. No coleslaw, right? And the kids, the kid stops dead in his tracks and goes, as if, mum. And she wanders over to like the display and looks at the coleslaw. And while looking at him, is like, ooh, it looks like there's lots of cabbage in it today as well. <laughs> Have you put extra carrot in this, trying to get the person to play along? Ooh, the mayonnaise looks so tangy. And you're not going to get any. What a shame. And he just stopped dead. He, he did exactly Are what you he sure did. this isn't a story from your life? No, 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 no. When I was a kid, it was always, you'll have to go outside. I'd be like, no, Mum, it's sunny out there. So you're saying the kids don't care about the bikes, the no. telly, and the crystal meth. <laughs> <laughs> it's the coal store it's that the they want. the coal that gets them. Wow. Wins them over every time. So you were just sent outside. <laughs> yeah, I was always <laughs> outside. Good. But, Mum, it's sunny out there. See, my mum, uh, any excuse to just uh, leave and move to a new family. That, was, that was the threat. <laughs> Constantly. And that could happen at any time of the day or night. Really? Because in trouble, right, put everything in the car, we're leaving. <laughs> and we just start driving to presumably a new town and a new family. You are the littlest hobo. And then if people who, possibly, there must be one person listening who knows Tim's from New Zealand, just on the outskirts, there's a place called the Rendezvous Motel. <laughs> oh, oh wow. Nelly. And I knew mum was serious if we got past the Rendezvous Motel. <laughs> And then my stepfather would want to know what had happened. And see, I was under the impression, being a kid, Mm. that it was pronounced Rendezvous Motel. (laughs) The thing is, so is my stepdad. So we'd have these great conversations where it'd be, so did you get past the Rendezvous (laughs) Motel? He might have just been playing along with me. I think you might have. I said Rendezvous up until only about two years ago. I think he was trying to humour you, Tone. Okay, that was severe. But a more simple one would just be, oh, you know when she knew that she had you? Mm. Something Rob Sitch was talking about. Mm. When she knew you'd seen part one of a Batman. 
and so she could threaten you with not seeing part two. Oh, yes. And you go, oh no, he's going to be, I'll never know how he gets off that conveyor belt <laughs> that doesn't move very quickly. <laughs> How's he going to do that? So that was the ultimate. That's a horrible fate. You can't watch part two of Batman. Yeah. Richard, what did you have hanging over your head as a youngster? Well, I've talked before about how we had a VCR with a remote control with the cord attached. Yeah. yeah. Um, the reason that we <laughs> had one of those is that because my father thought that the rays coming out of remote controls were carcinogenic. <laughs> yeah, sure. And if you got in between the remote control <laughs> and the television, you get stricken down with a sickness how's very his, quickly. Uh, how's his bomb shelter going, Rich? It, it was years before we got a microwave, <laughs> I'm telling you. Bomb shelter's fine. The classic, though, was, of course, you can't eat any seeds, you know. Yeah. Um, don't eat the seeds because then at some stage, presumably, you'd have a butternut growing in your lower intestine. <laughs> okay, so these are punishments. Go and stand between the remote and the telly. Yeah, eat this bag of seeds. <laughs> yeah. And I'll fry you up. <laughs> so what did they threaten you with? Um, well, I mean, all, all kinds of things. Dropping you off in the country. Oh. <laughs> There was always, get in the car, we're going to the country. Almost like the same farm the pet dog went to at one stage. And, like, we would go for a drive until you'd, you'd apologise. You know, we'd be up... Miles and miles away <laughs> in the hills until, you know, it would make you apologise, though, eventually. <laughs> right. Well, Nikki Hamilton, our producer, is here. And this all came about because we were talking on our way to the shop this morning. Nikki, what punishment have you seen or heard of being dished out? Uh, now, my friend, if, if he was playing up in the car, he was threatened to, like, get out and, like, run behind the car while they drove. <laughs> but actually followed through on. And the reason I know this is because his father told the story at his 21st. Oh, birthday. that's <laughs> why. That's the ultimate proof that it happened when it gets tabled at the 21st. Although it makes his dad look like the president that has a really pathetic guard. <laughs> that's his one. <laughs> they all have got his one eight-year-old to protect him. <laughs> Talking into his sleeve. <laughs> Hi, Nathan. How are you? Not too bad. And how are you? Oh, man, I'm all right. What happened? What used to happen? Uh, my mother used to stick her tongue down our ears as punishment. <laughs> really? Yep. And was she still giving you, like, a, a lecture as she was doing it? <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> what happened? <laughs> what happened? Will you misbehave? No, it wasn't like that, but she also used to do it to our friends. Oh, <laughs> really? That's just sport. After a while, she's just doing it for fun. Uh, it was very embarrassing at school. And was, was, did Dad queue up for one of those as well? <laughs> no, no. Okay. All right, Mark. Um, well, my uh, auntie and uncle lived across the road from us when we were kids, and that was m my mum's sister, and if we didn't eat all our dinner... Mum used to threaten that tomorrow night we'd have to go over and eat at Auntie Dawn's place because she was oh. such a bad cook. <laughs> and what kind of stuff was she turning on? Oh, mate, slop. Slop. Bubbled in tomato sauce. Just calling up. Is it going to be slop again, Dawn? <laughs> yes, I'll send them over. Have some slop ready. Which wine goes with slop? The team from Get This. They're stupid, they're thuggish, they're completely contemptible, they're completely unacceptable. He speaks for no one in my view. All right, OK, so that's a thumbs down from her. But I think at large, yep. the general listening public will be turning to this program Love it. for cutting hedge, cutting hedge information. That's right. <laughs> I'll be out there. First with the snippets. Trimming the hedges <laughs> until I get answers. <laughs> Politics. You know, I'm looking through over the weekend. Uh, obviously, there was that business with the union thugs. Yes. The two union thugs in the uh, pro work choices ad turn out to be actual thugs from real life. Not bad casting. Oh. I'm thinking uh, they're going to replace them. Gus and Dave from the old KFC ad. Great right. idea. Oh, wow, this is How it. heavy were the homosexual undertones in the work choices ad? <laughs> not very, I don't it's think. me and Dave. Going me. by this gentleman's uh, resume, not very. It's me and Dave. We can, <laughs> whew, we'd camp anything up. Sorry. Uh, anything. People new to the time slot would not be aware, perhaps, that uh, Ed was Gus from the Gus and Dave ads on KFC and yeah. uh, talked about it a bit much on the show. The ads got pulled. Got sacked. Uh, Still going up in the Northern Territory, I yeah, heard by a satellite. I don't get paid for that. Uh, <laughs> and... Uh, Helmet of hair, that's all me. That's and apparently my character based on Kramer. So I don't want to say too much, mm -hmm. but uh, the Emmys, I got overlooked again. Uh, not okay, happy. well, maybe you could step into the breach there. Then, uh, well, more slurs. The smear campaign uh, claims that a married federal minister visits gay bathhouses and sexually harasses other men <laughs> surfaced in uh, News Limited papers over the weekend. Laurie Oaks. Pictures, uh, pictures, pictures. <laughs> well, Come on, footage. Come Oatsy on. is claiming that these smears originated from the Liberal Party themselves. Not bad. Oh, Not a bad yeah. plan. So this is a PR move, is it? Absolutely. <laughs> We've got to get this guy out into the general public. He's doing some really good work. <laughs> I don't know, I've seen him. It's good harassment. It's good solid harassment. <laughs> really touches the heartland. Well, it's not the heartland he's after. Wow. It's certainly touching something. Exactly. All I can think of is the word dirt unit, but I'm trying to... <laughs> 
rearrange it in a <laughs> yeah. non-dirty way. See, this is all faff. I'm just getting this out of the paper. This is padding, This man. isn't the exclusive election coverage no, no, we no. promised at the top of the break. No. For that, we turn to Richard Mars, and you've got us an exclusive interview, haven't you, Rich? I sure do. Yeah. Alexander Downer. Oh, yes, please. Yes. Downer. Mr. Downer, thanks for your time. It's a pleasure, Tony. It's Richard, actually. It's a pleasure. I thought I might have a go at one of these skits with the audio of your interview taken out of context, if that's okay. Well, uh, Tony does them normally, but he's running late today for a doctor's appointment. Um, I, his, I don't think he has a health problem, frankly. That would no. be my judgment. I think he has a credibility problem. But we did get the results of Ed's gastroscopy here. Uh, look at that picture, Mr Downer. What is that in there? Um, is that the soundtrack to High School Musical 2? A great record. Yeah. Hard as that is to swallow. Well, just to cut you off there... Are you a fan of Tony's interviews? Look, I mean, sometimes they work, sometimes they don't. I suspect, um, if I may offer a little professional advice here... Please. ..never underestimate the intelligence of the Australian public. Oh, thanks. And, and thank you also for giving me a hand with this. Uh, so many grabs of yours to use here, but um, also lots we had to throw out. But they weren't thrown out for what they said. Also, what Tony likes to do is use selected sound bites from politicians to finish his sentences. Well, and I have to say, they sound pretty good coming out of... The speaker. Very good. That's exactly it. I think I'm getting the hang of this. <laughs> um, as long as we don't do something foolish, like play the wrong interview grab at the wrong time or... I'm fully expecting it. Oh. Uh, they'll find someone silly enough to run it somewhere. Sorry, what happened there? It doesn't matter. But, but that was Julia Gillard just there. Yeah, I'm not going into that. Well, You see that in politics from time to time. OK, it won't happen again then. Let's move on. Thanks, Tony. Richard, well, this really isn't working. Well, I wouldn't put it that way, no. I think what... Um, just don't tell anyone about that slip-up. Um, there's no need to be babies about this. Um... Cheers. So now on to hard news. There's been lots of talk about dirt units <laughs> yeah. and the idea that upcoming electioneering is going to be one big smear campaign. Let me say this about public life. I think Cabinet... Mm ministers um, should be subject to intense scrutiny. I think that is in the public interest. Even if some of the allegations made aren't, aren't right and so on, oh. um, they have to correct the record. It doesn't matter. It, it doesn't matter? It doesn't matter. OK, uh, so I could say that. Uh, for instance, um, you choreographed Britney Spears' performance at the MTV Video Music Awards. It's certainly not relevant. Or I could say that you're responsible for kicking off Caprile again next month. It won't come back in November, you could be sure of that. Oh. Um, it's conceivable it could come back in October. I, I, I could say that you're fond of breaking into your Julia Gillard impression. Well, we wish we knew. Mr Downer, if you could leave us with just one positive thing to take us into this election campaign. Oh, yes, I don't think I shall ever become Prime Minister. Well done. Alexander Downer, thanks for your time. Thank you, Tony. <laughs> Excellent work, Richard. <laughs> and I love how you picked up on that bit where he says, it doesn't matter if the claims aren't accurate. I know. That wasn't changed. That was something he really said. It's actually something that he said. Whatever is said, fine, it might have to be corrected later on, mm. but scrutiny is important. Yeah. I love how he kept calling you Tony, though. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe you've got to announce yourself at the beginning of your interviews. How does that sound again? I'm Richard. Maybe you just throw in one of those <laughs> at the beginning of the interview. Not so much confusion. Um, okay, there's that brown low metal business, though, isn't it? That happens tonight. Oh, yes, that's tonight. It is the culmination of a year's hard work from the girlfriends turning a blind eye. That's right. Uh, <laughs> Remember those all that. <laughs> the girlfriends, and uh, occasionally there'll be one that isn't blonde. No, wait, that's, that's the crazy no, talk. They got rid of her. <laughs> Remember, there was all that talk about the players boycotting the Brownlow. Why? Because of that that conflict with Channel Seven. Oh, really? And everyone just thought, well, who cares? Just get the wives to come. <laughs> that's fine. <laughs> that's your television show. That's right there. It is the best show on television for those who love to watch people eating dinner. <laughs> it is amazing. It is just incredible. Will there be music entertainment? I don't know. Weren't they going to have uh, Todd and Brandt and their band, you know, oh, from really? the mind disaster? Weren't they going to be performing? Ouch. Because it's a great story in the paper. I think I got this one uh, courtesy of our friends at the Courier Mail in Brisbane. Yeah. The wife of Beaconsfield mine survivor, Brandt Webb. Mm. Never bothered to explain why his name's Brandt. No. <laughs> hours and hours of testimony and investigation. No one ever just said, <laughs> what's with Brandt? <laughs> Take can't, your seat, Mr. Martin. You can't just combine Grant and Brent and say that's a name. It's better than that girl's name that I always bring up, Craig Ett. I'll ask my friend Brodney. <laughs> what do you reckon, Brillip? Okay, anyway. <laughs> okay, sorry. The wife of Brant has yeah. thanked the Foo Fighters for coming good oh. on a promise to compose a song about their uh, underground ordeal. Remember mm. they promised yes, to do absolutely. Right. New album's coming out. Mm. Listen to Dave Grohl. What a crafty bastard. Frontman Dave Grohl has confirmed... 
that an instrumental inspired by the rock fall and subsequent tale of survival will feature on the band's new album. Yes. An instrumental? Yes. Yeah. That could be anything. <laughs> so you can just go, oh, yeah, this is about their mind disaster. <laughs> As... Remember now, remember Bill Shorten and his bomber jacket? Yeah. That Hold other it. spokesman bloke who was just always there? There's Koshi getting into the ambulance. How's that? What's going on there? Obviously, the album's been finished and mm. someone's gone, Dave, did you remember that song about the mind? Oh, oh, no. oh, no. Okay, so oh, we just smack that drum. I'll pretend I'm playing guitar. Yeah, say the instrumentals about it. Good work. How will they prove it isn't? <laughs> That's what it sounded like down Absolutely there. Absolutely right. As far as I know. All right, I think we're running over in this break, so let's go straight to music. Here's the new E from the Foo Fighters. <laughs> I just want to see how long it's going to take for someone from the music department to come around. I think Toto are reforming as we speak. <laughs> Hi, Vinny. Here he comes. No. Get this at the new time of 2 o'clock. Or in Adelaide, 3 o'clock. On the Triple M Network.